what else do we got here? I'm not even halfway through. <clears throat> okay, Bethany Ann, 26TGS, what are your top five favorite films and why? You know, here's the thing. I really don't like top five questions. I find it really hard to narrow things down like that. Um, I mean, let's see, you know, I think that I tried figuring this out a few years ago, and it's, you know, it's like Amelie, Royal Tenenbaums, um, I'll throw a Battle Royale in there, maybe. The film is amazing, but that might be because I like watching Asian kids kill each other. It's a hobby. What can I say? Um, you know, I, I can't even say. I don't even know. Like, my tolerance for movies these days has also gotten a lot different than it, than it was. I used to be able to watch the same movie a whole bunch of times. Now I kind of I get bored after, after like one or two times. Like, if I like it, I'll watch it like twice, but I don't really have like a favorite movie that I'll like watch over and over again. So let's just leave it at that. I mean, it's not a bad question. Some people have that, but I just, it's not, I don't have a good answer. So, anyways. Um, Chrissy Howes, my favorite, um, my favorite English class. Um, she asks very deeply and intelligently, uh, screw top or cork on a bottle? And I'm guessing she means wine. Um, and you know what? I will go either way. Um, but one of my favorite wines is a Zinfandel called Cardinal Zin, and it's a screw top. And I think what I've heard is that um, certain wines, at least, are better with a screw top because uh, they're less likely to aerate or something like that. And um, <clears throat> I don't know. I, I think that a lot of the industry is moving towards screw top bottles. And I don't think it's a sign of lower class or anything like that. I think it's just a good way to store wine. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me, but you know I'm I'm hardly a wine expert. Um, I do like, as beers go, Lambic, and uh, the Lambic brand that I get at the store has a cork in it, and that's a beer. Go figure. All right. She also asks, <clears throat> what do you think of strange English girls hanging around LA? <sighs> I love it. I love it, Chrissy come back. Let's hang out. We'll go to the pub. The one you like, with the Australians. Okay. <clears throat> and then she also asks, when you open a packet of crisps, do you open it right side up, and what does that say about you? Um, I do open it right side up. I, I always try, I always endeavor to open packaging the way that it was intended, and I don't really have a great reason other than if presented with a package, there's, I just, I see the place that they want me to open it, and it, it's not like, I'm not going to fight that. It's not like I, I don't see the packaging. I think some people just see a bag of chips, and they go, Ksh. oh, I open it upside down. I see the bag of chips, and I see what's on it, <clears throat> and I determine, I guess if it's, if it's well designed. I mean, you know, I went to graphic design school. We had to design stuff like that, and um, I have an appreciation for packaging science. So yes, I don't know what it says about me, but um, I don't think I put too much thought into it. <clears throat> I'm not neurotic, and once in a while I do open it upside down by accident. But then it bugs me, so I guess I'm kind of neurotic, aren't I? Thanks, Chrissy. Thanks for pointing that out. FGMCA80 asks me, how did you deal with being trans in your teens and early 20s? Now that's interesting. Um, God, that's, that's a pretty serious question, actually. Um, well, I didn't start transitioning until I was, uh, like, for real, get on hormones until I was 29. So, I mean, up until then, up until I saw counseling, I, st I first saw a counselor for this when I was 26. Um, but up until then, it was just a secret. I just kept it as a secret. And um, when I was in, you know, like, high school and uh, middle school, like, I used to um, uh, sneak up and, 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 like, try on my mom's clothes and stuff like that. I was total, like, turn, like big t-shirts into dresses and stuff like that in secret. Um, I had long hair and I, so I, you know, I just, uh, I don't know, I was like your average closet cross-dresser. Of course, I didn't know what trans was, you know, until, until like my, you know, early 20s or something like that. I just did, I was from Michigan and then I was living in upstate New York and then, you know, 
Georgia, and I just, I just didn't know about the option. I didn't know you could get on hormones until I was probably like 22 or something like that, but then I was too terrified to do it. Um, so I, I dealt with it. I lived my life. I mean, I've had a happy life, but it's always been a secret and it's, um, it has not been good for my relationships. Um, I'm, you know, I'm definitely happier and much more open now, but, uh, I don't know. It, I, I, I haven't quite discovered the full impact of what it meant to me back then. Um, how did I cope? Oh, that's right in there. Um, I coped by just dealing with it. I don't know, living life. Um, at what point did you feel you had to transition to feel whole? Well, you see, that's the thing, is um, when I was 26, I had a, I had a nervous breakdown. I, I was taking, I, for some reason, I mean, I didn't take transition seriously, yet I started taking some herbal hormones, um, phytoestrogen stuff. And I think it started doing something. It started working. Or maybe it was, I don't know what was going on. I was I took diet pills and this phytoestrogen stuff. And uh, they had a reaction of some sort. I got scared. I had a nervous breakdown. And um, <clears throat> I was in bed for like, you know, like a few days. And I wouldn't leave my bed. And, and, and my girlfriend was really great at the time. And, um, <clears throat> you know, helped me through it. And so then I decided I had to go see a counselor because I had to take it seriously. I mean, if, if it affected me that much, you know, like, I had to look into it. And I, my intention was to fix it, you know, and not be trans. Um, you know, maybe it was something in my past that, you know, made me do that. And, and, it, and this is just who I am, you know, like, I'm just evidently supposed to be a girl. So uh, I'm really glad that I went and saw help and sorted through it. And, you know, I mean, like I said, I was, I was fighting it. But, uh, there you go. Um, oh, well, I mean, then you could say that after two years, when I was, you know, 28, 29 is when I kind of figured out, like, okay, I really want to take this seriously. And, uh, so when I was, you know, like, just turned 29, I, that's when I really started, and to start, started my hormones. Um, okay, 